Professor Gallier is the founded, founding director of the Fire Safety Engineering Group, FSEG, at the University of Greenwich, where he has worked in the area of computational fire engineering research since 1986. His work, and that of the FSEG, includes the modelling of evacuation, people movement, fire smoke spread, combustion and fire suppression. Professor Gallier's work is applied to marine aviation, building and rail industries. Professor Gallier and FSEG are responsible for the development of the extra suit of evacuation software and the smart fire simulation software. He is the author of over 100 academic publications. His work has been recognized through a series of prestigious national and international awards. And he serves on a number of national and international standards and safety committees, committees concerned with fire and evacuation, including the BSI, ISO, IMO, and SFPF. His talk today is going to be on simulation, simulating the interaction of pedestrians with wayfinding systems. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to be presenting a paper uh, in this session called Simulating Interaction uh, of Pedestrians with Wayfinding Systems. Uh, I'm actually not Lazarus Philippides, who was meant to be presenting this paper, but unfortunately he can't, uh, can't do that today, so I'm filling in for him. But I'd like to acknowledge the co-authors on the paper, uh, Lazarus Philippides, uh, Dr. Steve Gwynn, and Dr. Peter Lawrence, and myself. What we're going to be talking about uh, is uh, several topics, but we're going to be looking at the uh, wayfinding systems uh, and the importance of signage in, uh, in, in finding ways through, through systems, be it for evacuation or be it for circulation. We're going to talk about uh, a concept we've developed called the visibility catchment area and how we're introducing signage systems into uh, uh, pedestrian and evacuation simulations. Uh, then I want to go through and uh, show you a demonstration of, um, of that system working uh, and then uh, finish up with some conclusions and talk about um, some further work. The um, signage systems are obviously uh, important, uh, well they're actually essential for navigation uh, and general circulation. Uh, the signage system though is even more important in emergency situations where you need to expedite your egress, especially in complex and unusual buildings, and buildings where people are not uh, particularly familiar with the layout of the structure. One of the things about signage is that signage, what signage tries to do is reduce the apparent complexity of a building by increasing the wayfinding efficiency of the individuals. And, and by that, what, what we're trying to do is decrease the amount of time that the occupant has to spend wayfinding. In circulation situations, um, it's important, signage is important, because you want to direct people to the appropriate commercial targets, be it your shop or service. And so you need to ensure that uh, the signage system is going to be appropriate for uh, 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 the circulation type applications. And as I said earlier, in emergency situations, it's, it's absolutely essential uh, because what we tend to find in evacuation situations is that people tend to use familiar routes, especially in, in structures with, that they're not familiar. For example, if we had to evacuate this lecture hall, even though you're all evacuation and pedestrian experts, I suggest that most of you would use the exit you've come in through and probably ignore the emergency exit at the back. But, uh, and, and, but a good signage system, uh, hopefully, would provide you with additional information so that you could try and circumvent and break that, break that loop. The efficiency of signage system depends on, on a number of factors. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but uh, for example, the number of visual stimuli that there is in the environment. If you're in um, an airport terminal, for example, you're bombarded by signage. And it's difficult to find uh, the commercial signage. It's difficult, well, actually, the commercial signage is probably the easiest one to find. But um, it's difficult to, 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 to select from the, from, the, from the noise, the signage noise, the type of sign that you're interested in, be it a circulation sign, a commercial sign, a sign leading you to a gate, or a sign leading you to an emergency exit. So the, the number of visual stimuli in the environment will affect the effectiveness of uh, the signage system. Uh, the location of the signs, where you place the signs, is going to have an, uh, an impact, especially in a fire environment. It's a bit stupid putting signs up where it's going to be obscured by smoke, but that's where we put them. So the location of the sign will have an impact. Um, the attentiveness of the occupants. Uh, are occupants actually looking for signs? to help them uh, uh, evacuate. The size of the sign, 
Um, again, in you know, I'll, I'll pick on airports, uh, but in airports you find commercial signage is enormous, and emergency evacuation signage is tiny. Uh, and so the size of the sign is going to, uh, again, have an impact on the ability to actually find the sign and use it to help you navigate. The level of lighting, if it's dark, if, it's, uh, if there's a lot of light and so on. All of these things will have an impact. Here's a, an example of um, uh, 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 two, two cases. Uh, can you find out, can you see where the emergency signs, exit signs are in, in all this noise? Well, there's actually one there and there's one there. So you've got to be able to uh, take into account the fact that you're going to have visual clutter with other, other obstacles in the way from the particular sign that you may be interested in, in detecting. Now, in computer-based evacuation and circulation models, on the whole, um, most of these models tend to ignore the interaction of occupants with signage systems, tend to ignore it. And what we tend to do is we, Im we impose an implied um, knowledge of the structure. Um, either people will globally know all the exits, they've got some God-given site and they know everything, where everything is, or they may only know a particular exit. And so they only go a, a particular route. Um, now, this may be appropriate in, in a number of different types of application simulations, that this might be an appropriate assumption to make. But in many cases, or in some cases, this is an oversimplification. And so it's essential to introduce into the simulation models an ability for the avatars to interact with the signage system and enable them to improve their wayfinding capability. For a person to react with a sign, they must first of all physically be able to see the sign. Uh, and so you need to determine uh, where is it physically possible to actually see the sign. Then there are a number of other factors that you need to take into account. There's a recognition. You've got to recognize that this is the sign you're interested in. You've got to interpret the information that's on the sign. And then you've got to actually, at the end of the day, take the desired action um, that the sign is, uh, is, is, is imparting. The first item on the list is really a physical item. It's, can I physically see the sign? The other factors are psychological and behavioral type uh, considerations. But the first thing you've got to be able to do is you've got to be able to see the sign. And this introduces an immediate difficulty when you're looking at simulations that might have 25, 50, 100,000 people. Because if you're doing line of sight calculations for all of these people, throughout the simulation. That's going to be quite an expensive calculation to do. And one of the things that uh, engineers keep on telling us is that our software always runs too slow and they want it to run faster uh, and give us the answer quicker and so on. So we can't be bogged down in doing these uh, horrendously expensive calculations. So what we've done at, uh, at FSEG is we've turned the problem around and we've identified key objects that we want, to, that we want the avatars to be able to see. It might be a sign or it might be a key feature in the building. And what we do is we calculate where is it physically possible to see that sign from. So we turn the problem on its head. Instead of looking at each individual, each avatar, and working out what they can see, we, we identify the key aspects of the system and determine where is it physically possible to see those components from. And we turn this to visibility catchment area, or the VCA. And we've just uh, recently implemented this into, into Exodus. Uh, and uh, what we'll do is show you a demonstration of that working. Essentially what Exodus is, for those of you that, that don't know the software, it's a, 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 a software product that attempts to simulate uh, pedestrian movement and evacuation. It's made of a number of sub-models. Uh, we have a behavioral model which tries to uh, simulate the, the behavior of people in various circumstances and so on. What we try and do in Exodus is to simulate people-people interaction, how people interact with each other, people structure interaction, how they interact with the physical layout, and people fire interaction, how they interact with the developing fire. Uh, another thing is that Exodus is stochastic in nature, and so you don't simply want run one simulation, you need to run several simulations. Each time you run a simulation, you'll get a different result, and what you've got to look at is the distribution of results uh, rather than looking at a single number that comes out of the software. 